And this video is brought to you by my Patreon subscribers. Thank you so much for making these videos possible. Barrow, Alaska shivers near freezing. So does most of the Arctic Circle below zero. Resort in Georgia, snowfall August. Following this down, they talk about the 1970s snowstorms in Edan. And wait, snows in July in Russia? I didn't hear about that, so I looked at it. Yeah, three degrees Celsius with snowfall. As the world was talking about heat in Norway, I guess they missed that. But that 1970s snowstorm in Edan matches up with the same time period. Earliest snowfall in Japan since the 1970s. And looking at the sunspot count, it's very possible that we're going to repeat these 1970s winters again, beginning now as we plunge into the grand solar minimum. And once small creeks become waterfalls rushing through neighborhoods behind homes, that's not normal. That's an atmospheric compression event. And I've started posting all these videos in a blog post form, steamit.com, adapt 2030. And as you start to begin to grow and experiment growing your own food, trueleafmarket.com, the Adapt 2030 True Leaf Market link is in the description box below, as well as the links to tonight's stories and images. Barrow, Alaska. They've been telling you in the global warming debate, Alaska is getting warmer and warmer. Well, at least not these next couple of weeks. Near freezing, out through the 27th, these high temperatures of what? 37 degrees, 35 degrees, and then we go out into September 1st. Ooh, a whopping 36 degree Fahrenheit high. Break out the umbrellas, it's beach weather. And over to Knoll School to take a look around the area. Anywhere it's blue, you can see that's freezing or below. That's a large amount of the Arctic Circle. And remember, the melt season ends in about two weeks, so we'll be back to gaining ice. And then the news will try to have to explain away why it's gaining since the last couple of years. Good luck with that one. Over to snow in Georgia. You know, we had those rare snows in Japan just the last couple of days with frost in August. Now we have reports of snow in Georgia. Where is Georgia? Right on the Black Sea, sandwiched between Russia and Turkey. That's the whiteout. Let's zoom in. Right where that red star is, is the area where this is happening. It's in the mountain resort area, 2,200 meters. Well, back on August 12th and 13th, you can see they had a couple of inches of snow up there. Extremely rare. You know, people were caught out camping, not prepared for this cold weather. And you can see when it's covering roofs and that much ground, it is several inches coming down. And as I always do when I'm in a website, I just put the word snow or cold or record cold or record snow or snowstorms in to just see what else they have in their news feeds. And I found this summer snow in Russia. I hadn't heard about that. July 21st. And I thought, all right, air temperatures around three degrees, record snow, unusual snow. And I thought, where is this place? So I looked, it's up at 69 degrees north latitude. And if you follow that right around, you're going to come to Norway again, where they were talking about the all-time record temperatures during this exact same event. So it had the record heat over in Norway and Sweden. But somehow they missed the cold and record snow on the same latitude over in Russia. So glimpsing into the European temperatures today, where's the heat wave? Oh, it's gone. And those same areas that had the record heat about two weeks ago, below freezing already. This is August. It's supposed to be the hottest month of the year, right? In the Northern Hemisphere. So back to the news feed where I found the original story on snow in Georgia. They talked about abnormal snow in Edan. 1972. So I thought that's real interesting. What are they talking about? Oh, eight meters, 24 feet of snow in one single storm. That's how deep it got to bury those telephone poles. So then when you have stories like this from yesterday and the day before, I'd have done videos on record setting early snowfall, Hokkaido, August 17th. You need to look back at the sunspot count. I mean, we're going into a grand solar minimum. 1970s had brutally cold winters for both the northern and southern hemisphere, extreme storms. Almost all the records being broken now are breaking the records from the 1970s that were set. You got to realize the 70s was an extreme weather decade. And here we are starting to repeat it. So I'm just wondering, based on what happened in Japan with the snows cooler in Alaska, how much snow Edan is going to get? Because if it repeats something like the 1970s, they're going to get blistering multi-feet snowstorms again, 10, 15 feet. That's going to lock in a city. And when you see things like this, waterfall roaring behind homes in New York, this is an atmospheric compression event. As I did one video before, they had five times the amount of rain for the last month. And when you see streams turning into this, 
that's not normal. That's not CO2. That is our sun affecting our jet streams, shifting moisture patterns as it does with every single grand solar minimum. And I'll leave this as an example to show you how the intertropical convergence zone does shift during grand solar minimums. That's a lot of moisture moving. This explains a lot of the floods and the droughts. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. You can support me on Patreon or PayPal. And also my tri-weekly podcast, Mini Ice Age Conversations. More in-depth analysis on these same trends in our climate. What you can expect for food pricing moving out. And interviews with interesting people in the same climate sphere.